to another Cheapo Multimeter Review. Yes, bringing you the latest, greatest Cheapos in the Multimeter realm. Today in the spotlight, the all-new Suetla S11 Smart Multimeter for your Cheapo pleasure. Let's take a look. And wow, oh wow, this is one gorgeous looking multimeter. I'd have to say this is probably one of the best looking smart meters out there, if not the best. And overall, it's just a darn good looking meter. <sighs> multimeter ships in a pretty cool looking box, telling you it's smart right off the get go. Um, yeah, fancy schmancy is all I can say. Uh, good looking stuff. Came in a really nice carrying case as well. Look at that high quality. This is a nice case, has a zippered enclosure, so uh, it's going to keep your meter in top shape all right what do we get in the Let's box start off with that user manual it is all in english and chinese <laughs> but uh yeah there we are on the english side actually some pretty decent fonts pictures easy on the eyes good quality paper um i like i like hey this is what you need with a multimeter nothing that you need to download over the internet no no nothing in the cloud manual comes with the Let's meter a pretty decent <laughs> set of sense. test leads cat 3600 cat two 1000 volts have that nice little shroud on top and whoa that is sharp um yeah but uh, slightly on the small side perhaps if you have slightly bigger hands but um they have a pretty decent feel to them and look at the shroud yeah we don't have that uh, 90 degree angle angle going on straight into the meter and you'll see why in just a minute finally you do get this usb slash c cable because you guessed it it has a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Ura, good stuff. Yes, it is long, long overdue to see rechargeable batteries coming in multimeters. And I hope we're gonna see a lot more of them. Big shout out to Suetla for sending in the S11 Smart Multimeter for this review. As I previously mentioned, this is a gorgeous multimeter. It really is, um, very svelte. Solid as this well. This feels really, really nice in the hands. Extremely well made. Uh, the rubber boot does come off. And uh, here you are. Lean, mean, smart multimeter machine. Wow, look at that. Does that ever look like a phone or what? Now on the sides, we do have those extra function buttons. I'll look at those shortly. But uh, overall, just the general fit, feel, finish. Mmm, loving it. Now, as I said before, it ships with a uh, USB cable, USB-C to be exact, but it's really short. You know, it's about oh, 12 inches, 11 inches top. So really uh, too, too short for my liking. Um, I replaced it with a nice five foot USB-C cable. You can buy them everywhere, uh, peanuts nowadays, and it's much easier to work with. Being said, when it's charging, you do have that nice glowing red light to give you a charging indicator. Red means it is in a current charging state. Once it turns green, it means that the multimeter battery is fully charged. Now, one of the caveats is that while you're charging, you cannot actually use the multimeter that's right it won't even turn on you can press the button at the top but nothing will happen so in a charging state the meter is unusable on the side of the meter we have our manual function switch as well as the capacitance and a on the meter we have our negative and positive input negative on the left color coded with the black thank goodness and on the right with the red in the middle we have our usb c type connector Finally, at the top of the meter, we have our power button. To turn on, hold down for one second. To turn off, simply press once, and it's lights out in Georgia. And finally, on the back of the meter, as well as our standard warning label, it also tells us that we have a lithium ion battery inside, 3.7 volts, 800 milliamp hours. Made in China, we have the CE label, and that's about it. At the top of that, we have our flashlight. Once again, we do have flashlight capability with this little smart meter. Put the holster back in, super simple, just bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, and you're ready for action. Suetla S11 action. Now there's a couple of models, the S11, which has the lithium ion battery, and the S10, which has a standard battery, not the rechargeable. All right, I can hear you getting restless. Turn the meter on, Darren, turn the meter on. All right, all right, here we go. Holding down on that power button. And bada boom, bada bing, bam. Look at that. Greeted with a 10,000 count. 9,999. Okay, 9,999 count. LCD display. Color. Oh, gorgeous. Now this meter probably is going to be susceptible to a lot of glare just because it's so darn glossy. Outside it might not be the easiest to see. Um, and look at those, those fingerprints. Yeah, that comes on there pretty quick. Oh, <laughs> get my fingerprints all over my new Suetla. <sighs> 
No tilt stand on this multimeter. No tilt stand. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my vents. Oh my gosh. I miss my tilt stands when I don't have them. Here we are side by side with a couple of other smart multimeters, uh, both Annings, the 620A on the left and the 618C on the right. And uh, there you go in terms of a visual. Now that uh, 620A has a definite advantage in terms of screen real estate. Look at that, it takes up the entire multimeter uh, as opposed to the uh, the other Anning and the Suetla. This display area is much smaller. Now that being said, um, yeah, that color LCD is definitely uh, awesome to have look at that it just makes it also crisp really makes the font stand out um they all have that dual temperature at the bottom you can tell 22 degrees uh for both anning 618 and the sweatla and showing up as 19 for the 620 funny enough i did a review on this sata the 03055 a couple years back and um you know that was really the first so-called phone style meter i had ever seen um yeah but in comparison now this thing looks like a goliath exactly compared to these new uh smart thin multimeters tiny really so um let's just put him right against the sweat line you can see there's just absolutely yeah no comparison here so, jacks fit in just like so they're in there nice and snug and once again they are color coded so uh you know what you're doing if you're a newbie okay we're gonna start off with a dc accuracy so 5.000 volts is what we want and boo yeah look at that 5.000 on the money honey loving it so when you turn the meter on for the first time you are greeted with auto mode auto mode by default now auto mode means it's going to measure ac volts dc volts and resistance that's it that's already right. starting off with a quick dc voltage showdown got two smart meters and mr klein mm 600 which did a stellar job in last week's review okay sitting at one volt even steven look at that 1.00 for the klein 1.000 for the anning 620 and 1.002 for suetla okay up and away let's go up to 11 volts Bada boom, bada bing. Okay, so what, low? You took the longest to get there. 11.00 for the Klein, 11.00 for the Anning, and 11.01 for the Suetla. Hey, looking good. Alrighty, let's take it up. 16.40 volts. Actually, 16.41 according to the Sigmund power supply. 16.41, 16.41, and 16.42. Wow, that client just keeps impressing. And hey, Anning 620A, looking good. 16.42, not far behind Suetla. All right, here we go. Let's max it out now. 32.02 volts. 32.02 for the client, 32.01 for the Anning, and 32.04 for the S11. So look at that. Hey, wow, good stuff, good job. Um, definitely the winner was Klein again, but uh, the Anning was right there and Suetla was was awesome. I mean, these were all perfectly fine, super accurate meters. Uh, yeah, but uh, definitely that MM600 is setting a bar. Awesome. Here we are now in AC volts, 118.2, uh, 60 hertz, 59.98 hertz, uh, basically 60 hertz uh, frequency, uh, looking good. And look at that bar graph, glowing red. Uh, this is true RMS as well, good stuff. Hey, nothing like a second opinion, I brought in the Sanwa, and yeah, look at that, 118.29.2-ish compared to the 118.4 for the Suetla, and they're both showing that 16.01 hertz. So, uh, hey, good stuff, Suetla. One thing I'm not crazy about is the test leads themselves. Their color coding is a little weird. Look, this is a positive test lead, but we still have a lot of black going on here. And the negative test lead has the red, so this can get some people confused, and you don't want to be confused when you're dealing with high voltage. So, eh, don't like it. Okay, we are in resistance now in auto mode. And look at that, 100.1. This is a 100 ohm precision standard lab resistor. So, uh, hey, good stuff. This is one accurate little multimeter, I gotta say. Now sitting at 100 kilo ohm, and look at that, pretty well spot on. 900, 800. Oh, it's faster range too, I'm loving it. 500, oh yeah. 200, 200 kilo ohm spot on. Wow, good stuff, oh yeah. Okay, let's try 9 mega ohm. Awesome. 
6 mega ohm. Look at that. Look at that resolution coming up. Remember, this is 10,000 counts. 3 mega ohm. And finally, we'll settle on 1 mega ohm. Oh, beauty. Good stuff. Next up, we're going to go to dial mode. Now, we want to hit that select switch here on the side, or function switch, rather. And that'll bring us into dial mode. There we go. Okay, let's start off with the red LED. And it is lit with a forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Same. The white, yep, yeah, lit. The blue and the green, five for five. L illumination and forward voltage drop. Excellent job. Let's try a standard diode. Oops, see, already those test leads got me bamboozled that time. There we are, standard diode, 0.556 volts. Excellent. Now, we don't have that audible beep, but hey, that did really good. Really good. Output voltage in dial mode is a balmy 3.2 volts. Welcome back to another edition of... End of the Week. This week's went is one I'm sure you're oh so familiar with. Yes, it's universal in the land of multimeters. Cheap, not so cheap, and uber expensive, it doesn't matter. It takes this week's fint multimeters whose backlight doesn't stay on. Oh my god, it drives me crazy. Yeah, baby. First they appease us, and then they tease us. And before you know it, boom, the light goes off. Oh, and this one's my absolute favorite. The backlight slow death. What is that about anyway? Ah! But not so expensive. It's the same thing. Why, why can't OEMs just make a backlight that stays on? Oh, why? And amazingly, they do. But it's so rare. It's few and far between. <sighs> OEMs, take note. When you make a backlight, leave it up to us to turn it off. <sighs> Continuity time. Stock default test probes. Now take note. We are not in auto mode. Yes, you can do continuity in auto mode, but on these smart meters it's just not worth it that relay has to kick in and there's always at least like a two second lag so we're going to forego that and go directly into manual mode which is what we're in now manual mode for continuity the way it should be three two one oh yeah loud latched and really fast Ooh, let's try the pro masters well bad news they don't fit now the pro masters don't fit in fact it's not just the pro masters any standard test lead it's just not going to fit it's too big for those jack inputs so this really really um makes your choices of test leads uh, narrow uh too bad yeah they're non-captive but they're very proprietary they're very small <sighs> 76.2 decibels maximum output volume in continuity that's pretty loud Da 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 de 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 cleaning my suella. Oh, rolling. In capacitance mode, currently, I did try a 100,000 microfarad capacitor. Ah, uh, it just didn't work. It didn't work. Now, it does have a 99.99 uh, millifarad rating, so perhaps it was a tad over. Um, here's the next one I have down. 47,000 microfarad, 47 millifarad. It should work now first of all we've got to make sure we are in capacitance mode which we're not so we're gonna hit on the capacitance button and bada bing there we are in capacitance mode okay here we go 47 millifarad Siri says it's thinking and it's now in millifarad mode look at that bar graph slowly moving up and there we go 44.5 yes that is a good cap that is Perfect. Good stuff. So, hey, not too long either to get to the uh, readings. So, all in all, good stuff. Finally, on the small side, here's a 1,000 nanofarad, one microfarad capacitor. And there we are, looking good. NCV mode is next. Here we go. I see that bar graph lights up as that signal grows stronger. Good stuff. Gotta say thus far, I'm really impressed with the Suella S11. Wow, it's been accurate, it's been fast to range, and a ton of other things. Unfortunately, the meter does not do current, not even milliamps, oh, that's too bad. But uh, anyway, that aside, this thing has performed really, really well. Let's take a look on the inside. Okay, here we are on the inside, teardown time. Yeah, let's take a look. We do have that nice, big, clear acrylic uh, screen display, so 
Ah, nice, nice. And wow, let's take a look at that main PCB. Oh, let's get in nice and close. So first thing you notice is that big, well not big, it's actually tiny, looks big in the camera, but it is a small 800 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt lithium rechargeable battery. That just plugs into the header right here. Uh, small battery, I'm not sure what these would be like in terms of replacement if it ever went south. Closer look, yeah, there are those input jacks. They're screwed in, they're not soldered in, they're screwed in, but it is very nice, very clean. There's the USB-C header. Um, yeah, looking good. Here we have our speaker buzzer and one PTC. And of course, there's that relay. It's a small relay. Actually, I thought it was going to be a little bit larger than that. A uh, small relay for all of that smart functionality. Here's the back of the main multimeter and yeah, no shielding, no surprises. Um, good quality though, construction all around, nice molding and uh, those metal uh, inputs are in there nice and snug. And at the top of the meter here, we have the three soft touch buttons for the capacitance function and flashlight. Interesting enough, it says version 2.2. Uh, that is the PCB revision on this multimeter. A um, lot of diodes and uh, SMD components at the top. Now, if you take a closer look over here, this is the EEP ROM. This is the TC4028, I believe. And we see this a lot in conjunction with the DreamTech IC. So good possibility we have a DreamTech IC under that cob. Over here at the top, this is probably the display driver. It is completely uh, washed out so i don't have any markings on there to uh, pull a data sheet from but uh, there you go all in a nutshell pretty good looking pcb super clean and uh good size good gauge thickness as well uh, nice attention to detail i like what they've done already gonna put everything back together come back with my closing thoughts closing thoughts on the Swedla s11 smart multimeter oh this is a pretty cool meter i like super it. faster range highly accurate and in the day it just looks darn cool do current that's too bad not even milliamps what can you do and the other irk is oh those test leads are non-captive that's great but they're just proprietary the inputs are too small and you just can't swap them with regular test leads Still, if you're looking for a pretty cool multimeter with some of the latest gizmos that won't break the bank and has a color LCD display, 10,000 counts, true RMS, you know, this might be on your short list. The Suetla S11 Smart Multimeter gets a solid three out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.